Hey, welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. I'm uh, going to really welcome you back to the table. Hey, we start a whole new session this evening. Uh, we're going to be in Volume 3, the Yellow Book. If you haven't got one, I'd invite you to go ahead and, and get that at the church or let Shelly and I know. We'd be glad to get some to you, mail them to you, deliver them to you, however you need to get a hold of them. Uh, get a hold of them. You do not have to have the book to do the Bible study. You can follow them along with us. Uh, but the Bible study would go a lot more in-depth if you really wanted to uh, do some things that would uh, really help your walk as a disciple. So, anyway, uh, Yellow Book, Volume 3, Session 1 this evening. Uh, it's going to be Immersed in the Word. So as we get started this evening, hopefully you have everything you need to uh, uh, just kind of sit back and uh, listen for a while. Uh, kind of write some things down, get a pen, paper, or your book. Uh, I always like to write in my book. It uh, becomes like a journal book uh, for me, so hopefully that will for you as well. Um, also, uh, we'll have some uh, prayer time in a minute. Uh, announcements uh, this evening would be the food pantry tomorrow from 1 to 4 at uh, Pomona. Uh, it's always a, a great time of fellowship, a great time of uh, meeting and greeting the people from the West Franklin School District. Uh, also tomorrow we have a delivery truck for supplies around 9.30, so if uh, you're one of those workers, we invite you to come on over and, and join us in that. Uh, Sunday morning we're going to be live at North Baptist and live on Facebook at 10.30, so we invite you not only to join us, but invite somebody to join you with us as well, uh, whether you're coming in firsthand or uh, coming in through Facebook, however it works, we invite you to do that and and. Like I said before, I, I really want to encourage you that uh, the things we do on the at the lighthouse that's on Facebook or whether it's on North, I really encourage you to to share that on your page so others see what's going on. Uh, this last week, we got a new blessings box. Uh, that's really a praise for us on the North side. Our uh, our Boy Scout Cooper uh, completed the box and got it put up, and it's being utilized and established now. So uh, there's some information on that on Facebook. So we invite you to, to share that. Come by and take a look at it. Uh, hopefully it will get really utilized and be a great thing uh, there on the north side. Uh, also for uh, prayer concerns then, I want to remember uh, Jim uh, Scadell's father, David, uh, he'd had some problems with a uh, kidney stone and a bladder stone and uh, done a couple procedures and uh, Jim was there with him, uh, helping him out, uh, kind of recovering and stuff. So uh, I want to continue to pray for him and then also for recovery for uh, David as well. Also pray for Tony and Michelle, uh, Michelle for her health and then Tony for, um, he's had some uh issues and things going on with uh, some kidney stones as well. Uh, so I want to remember him, uh, that God would uh, work that um, all through and out for him as well. Um, continue to pray for uh, Cora and her recovery, uh, Scott and Tanya for uh, recovery and then for uh, health and an unspoken. Uh, continue to pray for uh, Jake uh, Skidell with his uh, newfound ministry basically in uh, the Marines now so we want to lift him up in prayer um, let's see what else is on the prayer chain there the prayer list um, can you pray for the services for uh, uh, the Bible studies for uh, the different things going on as well, uh, there have been several other uh, prayer concerns that have come through, but we invite you to uh, uh, be in prayer for those as we as we write those. And so this evening now, we invite you to, to join us in prayer as we begin uh, this evening in, in Bible study. So, Lord, we thank you again this evening uh, for time to come together. and We thank you for the beautiful sunshine and uh, uh, just the spring-like fashion that uh, things are going on, Lord. We know that uh, you've orchestrated all of that. Uh, Lord, we come before you this evening, uh, knowing that you are God, and just asking that you guide and direct uh, our thoughts, our, our minds, our our direction. Uh, Lord, we uh, really just uh, adore you for who you are and the way you provide for each one of us, Lord. We're so thankful, and I know so many times we, we take even the small daily things for granted, 
Uh, so Lord, help us to be mindful of those as well. And and uh, Lord, we come to you this evening with uh, with prayer concerns. Uh, we are thankful for those things that are that are going on in our in our world, in our lives, and and uh, Lord, just for your direction. Uh, Lord, I do think of my. Uh, my nephew Charles and, and just the situation he got going ahead of him with the chemo, Lord, we just pray that it would be sufficient for him and that it would be one that would really uh, just uh, um, be a time where really he can just grow even stronger in you, Lord. Uh, it would be one where the uh, healing would take place and, and Lord, that a, a spiritual rebirth would just really uh, be found in him. Uh, Lord, we pray for uh, Cora and her recovery, that uh, that would be the same as with her, that it would be so uh, <coughs> amazing with her strength, and, and each one that uh, sees what's going on, Lord, would be uh, just astounded, and, and uh, Lord, I'd give her an opportunity just to share and to tell about the, um, the power that resides in you. Uh, Lord, I pray that also for uh, Scott and Tanya uh, with uh, the health and with the recoveries and just with the unspoken. Uh, Lord, we pray for uh, just your astounding uh, power to be working within their lives. And, and Lord, I think of uh, uh, Tanya's mom, Betty, and her recovery, Lord. We just pray that you would uh, uh, give her strength and just draw her close to you at this time. And, and Lord, just provide uh, um, a new sense of, of life and, and resounding time for her. Uh, Lord, I do pray for uh, Jim and being with his father, and, and I pray for David and his recovery, Lord, that you would just uh, uh, bless them, uh, that you would uh, bless them with the time they have together, and, and Lord, that you would just give David strength and, and just energy above all that he uh, might have never had before, uh, Lord, that he'd be feeling better than, than he has in some time. Uh, Lord, I pray for Tony, too, and just the uh, situation in hand with him, with, uh, with the stones, and Lord, that you would just allow those things to, uh, to pass and for him to be up and going, and Lord, we pray for the, the pain and discomfort that he experiences. And uh, So anyway, this evening, Lord, we just uh, we acknowledge you, uh, we're thankful for you, we, uh, as we look into this Bible study this evening, Lord, we just ask that it would be one that would uh, uh, really just uh, uh, draw us closer to you. Uh, Lord, we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this evening as we sit around the table, we do have some fragrant lilacs. Uh, you know, we had a couple inches of snow here in Ottawa uh, yesterday morning. Uh, came and gone, uh, but uh, they were talking about freeze and the lilacs were in bloom, and so we brought some in before they got uh, hit by the, the freeze, which hasn't happened yet, but they're still talking about temperatures tonight. But uh, beautiful smell. I could smell those while I was I was praying, and, and just a, a joy for those things to be around. And so we brought in some of our outside little plants that uh, should be sitting outside for spring that uh, can't take the uh, the cold that way either. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the, the flower scenery uh, this evening. And so as we get started, we're going to be on session one. Uh, if you haven't joined us, uh, and this is new for you this evening, uh, even though we're in volume three, it's a great way to just sit down and take off and just be a part of where we are. I encourage each one of you on there to, to share this on your page uh, so others will uh, be able to see what you're doing and take part in it. Uh, um, it'll help you, it'll help others. For those of you that are on there this evening, be sure and tell everybody hello and, and you're glad you uh, have them alongside your journey. And so as we uh, get to that point this evening, let's just uh, dive right in, all right? So session one is being immersed in the Word. Uh, it's immersing ourselves in God's Word. It provides a, a foundation for us, for identity, for uh, our life, and really we're going to find out who we really are as we start to uh, join in in this uh, daily Bible reading, uh, being a part of God's Word. So this first session this evening in this volume three uh, focuses on finding finding Jesus in the scripture. When we immerse ourselves in God's word, and not only will we know him well, but we'll know how to find him easier, and it'll really help us to become uh, better followers of Christ in this world in which we live. It helps us to communicate not only with him, but with others as well. 
And uh, uh, as we begin this evening, we're going to look at the, at the final chapter of the Gospel of Luke. So we're going to be in Luke chapter 24. If you have your Bibles, you want to go ahead and turn that direction. So again, this evening we, we uh, journey into this volume three of this Disciples of Faith, this discipleship journey. Um, the goal is to help each one of us explore the process of, of growing and, and maturing as a, as a disciple of Christ, uh, not just being uh, stagnant, but continuing to grow. And uh, throughout these pages, uh, not only this chapter, but uh, the ones to come, it really helps us to examine how the disciples of Jesus were there to imitate him. And... Um, and they did that by immersing themselves in, in God's word and in God's presence as well. And so we do gain a deeper understanding uh, of what our mission is as a, as a follower of Christ. Uh, you know, I had mentioned uh, the last couple of times we've gathered together on Facebook that on the North Baptist or on the Lighthouse page, there's a, a link to take you to a, a place where you can go and uh, do a survey to help you find what your spiritual gifts are. And so I encourage you to, uh, after we're done here this evening, to, to go and do that. Uh, help help you understand who you are. Once you get to the to the gifts and it shows you what you are, there's even a, some examples of things that, that help you do what you do. Uh, to, and, and several people have done it, have been uh, really... Uh, intrigued by what their spiritual gifts are, uh, how they might be able to use those, and and once we start to use the gifts that God has given us in a way that he wants us to do, uh, man, it just opens up whole new doors for us. Uh, so anyway, I encourage you for that as well. And so that's kind of about our, our mission as a follower of, of Jesus, uh, how Jesus lives and works and, and uh, uh, how he lives through us and works through us in this world in which we live. So in this session, we're going to discover uh, Jesus' approach to Scripture, uh, his, his, God's Word, and uh, really practical steps that we can take uh, following uh, the way His example is uh, in our lives today. Um, so hopefully you're excited about this journey. Uh, I am. It's been a great uh, uh, faith builder, uh, a great walk uh, builder for me along the way. And so hopefully you are as well, and uh, hopefully you'll get a, a better understanding, uh, gain some uh, uh, wisdom of the Lord, and, and how your relationship uh, uh, really increases as you draw closer to her, uh, to him, and, and participate in his uh, mission in this world in which we live. And really, as we, as we do that, I encourage you to, uh, wherever you're at this evening, or if you watch this in the days to come, to uh, begin our time, you know, with prayer, you can just start uh, uh, saying a little prayer right there that, that God would uh, connect you through this Bible study and ask for your heart to be open, uh, your minds to hear what he has for you this evening. Um, you can thank God for his word, uh, which is really uh, amazing that we, we have it and we have it in an abundance uh, in our country here in the United States. It's trustworthy. Uh, it, it, it's clear, it's precise, it's insightful, it, it gives us uh, great direction as well. And so ask God for wisdom and the way we uh, connect with him and how we can study. And then as you're thinking about that, uh, as, you, as you might say a little prayer as we begin this evening, I'd encourage you to, uh, on Facebook here this evening, share one, one reason uh, why you... Uh, enjoy the study it's something that's maybe helped you something that's maybe uh, helped you connect with others uh, uh, whatever it is I encourage you to to write those things out and, and to share those um, on Facebook this evening and so as we begin this evening uh, immersed in God's word I want you to think this evening what is your favorite book now I don't mean book of the Bible if the Bible is not your favorite book what is your favorite book Favorite book that you've ever ever read? Uh, think about what the most influential book that you've ever read. 
And then I want you to think, what's different about those two questions? Uh, your favorite book or the one that's most influential? Um, your favorite book might be one that just gives you a time of, of joy or peace or just kind of um, some serenity in the process of this world in which we live. And the most influential book you read might be one that really speaks to you, uh, one that has uh, impacted your life in a, in a great way. Maybe it helped you turn the corner uh, in a direction in your life. And so in all those things, we find um, the most enjoyable things are not always the most influential. There's a difference between entertaining and there's a difference between impactful. And so that leads us to the discussion this evening about God's Word. Uh, this session regarding the Bible this evening is really uh, one of the first of the several sessions throughout the Bible of the Disciples' Path, this, this Volume 3, that will help us to understand and really capture uh, the spiritual disciplines of the Christian life. And so what are some things that you might think of, uh, and then as I ask you a question, I always encourage you to write those things down in your in your book, on your notebook, on your uh, whatever you're taking notes on or, or writing down. But what is the, um, why is God's Word so unique among all the other books? And then what word or phrase would describe your current relationship with God's Word? And then why? Now, not your relationship with God, but your relationship with God's Word. And that might be, oops, or it might be not very often. Uh, it might be, uh, it's hard to understand. It might be, uh, it might be several different things. And so think about that. What is your current relationship uh, to God's Word this evening? And so most Christians agree that God's Word is very unique. I shared Sunday that I have read the book of Joshua several times in my lifetime, and I really love the book of Joshua. It's about a, a new young leader uh, taking over in charge that God had placed him there and I remember as a young pastor, it was really uh, difficult to think of the things that God was trying to impress on my heart. And so Joshua was a, a very influential book in my life at that point. And so I had read it several times. And and then with the daily readings of, of last week for this week, uh, lo and behold, there's Joshua chapter 1. And as I read it, I, I ran across verse 3, and it just uh, jumped out at me like I'd never seen it before. And, and so... Uh, the unique thing about God's Word is that no, many how, no matter how many times you read it, uh, it can still say and speak to you in a, in a new way because you are physically and spiritually and, and mentally at a different stage of your life. And so that's the importance of not only reading through the Bible, but continuing to read through it and asking God for His direction. And so God is the author of all Scripture, he used uh, different uh, scribes and different men to, to pen the different uh, books in the Bible, uh, but God is the author. And so uh, by engaging in God's Word, then, we, we grow in our knowledge of who God is, we grow in our relationship with Him, and we grow in uh, what it means to be a follower of Christ in this world that we live today. And it's encouraging because whatever generation we are in, uh, whatever era of time God has placed us in, uh, His Word is still active and sharp and important as it is for all of those things today. Uh, you hear our, our dogs are uh, reflective to that very thought uh, this evening. So, so in today's this, uh, this session, we're going to discover Jesus' approach to Scripture uh, and how we can take practical steps to apply those to our lives. And so, think about this. Who is Jesus? Man, if you were to do a, an internet search and type in Jesus, you would find all kinds of things. Uh, 
from Jesus, the Son of God, to Jesus, the Son of whoever has been born today? And so you'll find many different answers. Some of those answers are specific. Others are really just bring on more questions. Okay, so regardless, you're, you're bound to land on some type of controversy, some type of disagreement, and then some type of agreement. And so a better way to answer this question is to go to God's Word. Okay, the Scriptures. And from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation, Scripture points to Jesus. And so simply put, the Bible is about Jesus. It's a love letter from God to you, written specifically with you in mind, about Jesus. Who he is, what he's done, and what he's going to do for you. And while it's crucial for Christ followers to read the Bible, how we read the Bible may even be more important. Um... John Calvin says the scriptures should be read with the aim of finding Christ in them. Whoever turns aside from this object, <laughs> even though he wears himself out all his life in learning, he will never reach the knowledge of truth. Uh, Jesus himself even said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so if we're not searching for Jesus in the scriptures, we're missing the main point of the scriptures themselves. And so you might have heard other people say, well, the primary reason for reading the Bible is this or it's that. But it's really about connecting with Jesus. And so during this session, we're going to see how we as individuals are to be immersed in God's word in a way that transforms the way we see God and then transforms the way we live out our lives in the world today. All right, so after Jesus' resurrection in Luke chapter 24, um, it describes a story about a couple of disciples. And so we're going to focus this evening on identifying some scripture that reveal Jesus' true identity. Okay? And so the days following Jesus' resurrection... Uh, when Jesus was raised from the dead, there were many eyewitnesses to him. Okay, and there were the the disciples, the women at the at the grave. There were uh, those disciples that were in the room when he came in and met with them. And then in First Corinthians, we see there was even five hundred others who had seen, and a lot of them were still alive at the time of the of the writing. So there was a lot of eyewitnesses. And so because of all the eyewitnesses, there were a lot of rumors that began to circulate throughout the area of Jerusalem. And so Luke 24 it gives us this account of these two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Okay? And on the way, a man joined them, and unbeknownst to them, this man was Jesus. And he asked the disciples about their conversation, and they told him they were troubled about Jesus' death. And the news that his tomb was empty. And so these two men were on the road to Emmaus. And that's where we find Luke chapter 24. We look at 25 and 27. And then 44 through 49. He said to them, How foolish and slow are you to believe all that the prophets have spoken? Wasn't it necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. So as they continued on this journey on the road to Emmaus, Jesus reminded them about Old Testament scriptures and the Old Testament prophets and how they revealed what would happen and was supposed to happen to the Messiah. So Jesus told those confused disciples 
all the scripture that really revealed himself to them. He said, really, you don't have a reason to be afraid. He was the one that accomplished what God had set him out to do. And then we move on down to 44 to 49. And he told them, these are my words that I've spoken to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scripture. And he also said to them, this is what is written. The Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things. And look, I'm sending you what my father promised. And as, you, as for you, stay in the city until you are empowered from on high. So it's interesting that the men were troubled because of Jesus' death. They were troubled because the, the tomb was empty. And yet those were the very words that Jesus spoke that would happen. And here he is walking with them. And the reason they didn't recognize him right off the bat was that they weren't looking for a live Jesus. They assumed he was dead. They assumed he was gone. And they just didn't know where his body had been laid. And so instead of going back just a few days before or a couple weeks before or, or maybe a couple years before, he takes them clear back to the Old Testament and the prophets. And in Scripture, he, he pointed those men to Jesus. And so the fact that that right there tells you that the Old Testament was written to point people to Jesus. And so at the time, at that time, where Jesus is walking on the road to Emmaus with these two guys, at the end of Luke chapter 24, the Bible consisted of the Old Testament. The New Testament was only beginning and it was only being written at that time because it was about Jesus. And so Jesus was using these Old Testament texts to show the disciples how he was the main character. He is the main character. And so that's important for him to emphasize because even today, a lot of Christians say, well, the Old Testament, that was just the old stuff, and we don't need that anymore. And that the New Testament is all about Jesus, and so they're two distinct sections. And, and yes, they are in a sense, but they're intertwined. Without the Old Testament, we don't need the New Testament. Without the New Testament, the Old Testament is not complete. They overlap onto one another. And so this text is seeming in Luke chapter 24 shows us that the entire Bible has been telling a story of God's redemption through Jesus. It did not just begin in the New Testament. It began when time began. And so some truths that we can take away from these passages are the, the truth of how important the Old Testament is to the finding of Jesus. And so, yes, we can turn right to Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, and we can find Jesus right off, but the importance of going back into the Old Testament and seeing Jesus being revealed in the Scriptures is the direction that we should and, and need to go. The Scripture reveals Jesus. He taught them how to understand scripture and how all of the redemptive history is pieced together and is culminated at the cross. In verse 27, we find, he says, beginning with Moses 
and the prophets, he interpreted for them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. So Jesus used the scripture to give these disciples hope of the resurrection. Yeah, the tomb was empty, but don't be discouraged because Jesus is alive. And when he presented himself to the disciples, he revealed that all that he had taught them had now come true. Jesus of Nazareth is Lord. He is the Son of God. And so Jesus used the scriptures to give the disciples hope with this resurrection. <clears throat> he previously told the disciples that he would die, but on the third day he would be raised to life. Now, when he presented himself to them, he revealed all that he taught them had come true. At the point, the disciples really probably thought that at, at, on the third day, he would be risen, but he would not be alive right there with them at that point. A few verses later in that same chapter, Jesus presented himself before all of the confused and troubled disciples. So some of the events in the, the few days surrounding Jesus' death and resurrection are what really uh, ties it all together. The disciples lost hope and they doubted what Jesus taught them because they really didn't quite understand. And so many times in our lives, that's the case. We, we doubt, we lose hope, we get confused, we get conflicted because we don't really know what God is trying to say to us. And so that's the importance of, of staying in God's Word and being a part of God's Word, even when we don't understand it, even when it doesn't seem like it's making any sense. When we stay in there, later on as things transpire, we see how it all then comes together. And so think about yourself. When are you most likely to lose hope? When are you most likely to doubt when he most likely to become confused now with those things we see how immersing ourselves in God's word is what helps to eliminate that doubt it eliminates that fear it eliminates that discouragement uh, the confusion and focusing on scripture uh, we become more and more convinced of Jesus' identity. And not only do we become more convinced of his identity, we're convicted in our own lives that we are now on mission for Jesus in this world that we live today. Jesus is central. He's the central theme to this whole Bible. <laughs> and then the Bible confirms our identity as Christians. Now, this wasn't the first time that Jesus used scripture. You know, in, in Luke chapter 4, uh, Jesus was fasting in the wilderness for 40 days. He was tempted by God's enemy, Satan. On three of those recorded temptations, Satan attacked Jesus' identity. And he began with, if you are the Son of God. And so really, Satan essentially dared Jesus to prove his identity, prove who he was by doing something amazing like turning the stones to bread, like jumping off the temple so the angels would catch him. But Jesus didn't need to do that to prove who he was. He was already proving who he was. He, he knew the scriptures. He'd immersed himself in them and he didn't have to prove his identity. He was being revealed. And so he countered each one of Satan's temptations with Scripture. And so we see all throughout the Gospels that Jesus knew Scripture. Even as a young boy, he, he learned it. He memorized it. He meditated on it. And then as an adult, he allowed the influence of God's Word to... Uh, really testified out through his ministry. And it came out in countless ways. Jesus is recorded in quoting scripture 78 times in the Gospels. 
Now I want you to think about this. Um, Psalms 119. Psalms 119. And then it's verses 9 through 16. How can a man be kept pure in his way? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and I consider your ways. I delight in your decrees and I will not neglect your word. And how would it be if all believers in Jesus Christ meditated and hid God's word in their heart on a, on a daily basis? And they not only said so that I will not sin against you, but that would let Scripture prove that in our lives. And this place that we live would be a, a whole different place if that really took place. Now, if you don't catch anything else this evening, what I want you to catch is this. We find our identity when we find the identity of Jesus. And so really what I'm saying is until you find the true identity of Jesus, you will never know really who you are. You're always going to be continually seeking, continually looking for something else. Something else to fill you when Jesus is the one. So when we immerse ourselves in God's word, the living word, Jesus Christ, immerses himself in us. And so we find this unshakable identity then which everything within our life then flows from that. Okay, so, so scripture reveals who we really are. And so even though all of scripture points to Jesus and we read it with in tension of, of finding Jesus in those scriptures it's full of things concerning ourselves when we immerse ourselves in God's word through faith it's Jesus that immerses himself in us in our hearts, in our minds and in our lives and so that's what the Bible is about. We find an unshakable identity in the Savior, Jesus Christ, but we also find an unshakable identity in our own lives that can then transpose into our jobs, our lives, our families, our communities, our neighborhoods, our, our country, our world. And so this evening, I want you to think of uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. And so that tells us that we're not there yet, but through God's word, we can get to that point. We start moving a closer direction towards him. And Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and effective and sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrating as far as the separation of the soul and the spirit. Joints in the morrow. It's able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And so we see from those verses that they really tell us that God's word shapes us and it forms us into a, a usable servant for the Lord. 
So that's why it's important, it's essential that we look to God's word to, to tell us not only the truth about him, but the truth about ourselves. It's used for rebu rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness. It's a double-edged sword that cuts into the marrow of the thoughts and the hearts. And so that means that we're not there yet. But through God's word, he can move us along this journey where we need to be. And so what other things are we tempted to look to confirm our identities? You know, we, we look for jobs, we look for position, we look for families, we look for um, marriages, we look for children, we look for lots of things to try to find our identity when actually we find our identity in Christ. And so we need an external source of truth, which is God's word, because we can't trust ourselves to even tell the truth. I uh, knew a guy years ago that uh, seriously lied all the time, and he couldn't remember what lies he told and who he told them to. That So he would tell you one thing, and then the next day he'd tell you something else because he forgot he told you the lie yesterday. And so it was just amazing. But that's on a grander scale of what we do in our own lives individually. And so sometimes our, our feelings even lie to us, our emotions, our circumstances. Uh, sometimes they tell us that, well, God can't love us the way we are. He can't, you know, uh, those things can't be true. Uh, so that's why we've got to turn to God's word over and over again to find truth. Uh, we face situational difficulties. We face circumstances. We face hardships. Uh, and because of those things, we often forget the truth. Uh, whether it be financial, whether it be a health concern, whether it be death in the family or family problems, we face these things on a daily basis, combating a, a, a battle that we can't win, and yet it's God's Word that provides those answers. You know, it's interesting that God's Word tells us 365 times, don't be afraid. There's 365 days in a year. And so there's a don't be afraid for every day. So that means, obviously, that individuals that we are going to be fearful. Uh, we are going to struggle. But we find the truth and we find places to not be afraid in God's word. So think about it. What are some challenges that maybe you're facing today that, that keeps you from reading the Bible? Uh, busyness. Uh, time schedule. Uh, maybe you just don't even see the importance of reading it. Or, or maybe you've read through that before. Or maybe you've read through that book before, so you don't need to read it again. And so we've got to get to the point in our lives where we overcome those challenges. So we have to be intentional about listening. We have to be intentional about reading and, and listening. I mean listening to what God has to say to us. And so just as all of Scripture points to the cross of Jesus and identification with Him as, as really God's Son, the coming Messiah, we find a place where we embrace Him as our Savior and we immerse ourselves in His Word so that we can find our own true identity that we can find the truth of who we are. Uh, we begin to see that through faith in him, uh, he works in us in this world today so that others can see Jesus in us. And so sometimes those very difficult situations are just allowed so that others can see how we let God work through us. Not all situations are always good. But sadly, we often forget the truth that we need to be immersed in God's Word and we forget that on a daily basis. If we're not memorizing 
scripture, if we're not meditating on God's word on a consistent basis, there's no way that we can really fight off Satan's attacks. Jesus showed us in Luke chapter 4 the way to fight off temptation and, and attacks on the enemy is through God's word. God's word is going to provide help, truth, the, the direction to get through it. So we can't fend those attacks off without it. And so the more we study God's word, the more we learn about our identities in, in Christ. And it's not to just get to the point where, uh, you know, we're so boastful and prideful because we know God's word and we've read it. It's all about our identity in him and growing in that relationship. Charles Spurgeon, the, the famous Baptist preacher from the 19th century, said, As the rain soaks into the ground, so pray the Lord to let his gospel soak into our soul. And I thought the other day, you know, we, we had some light rain coming, uh, we had some uh, snow coming, uh, I had some grass seed in the yard, and I had some areas that needed some some seeding, and so as that was taking place, I got out and sprinkled that grass seed down so that that rain could soak it into the ground. It wouldn't wash it away, it would just soak it in. And and then as the snow fell on it, it would just continue to soak it into the ground so that it would take root and grow and, and to fill in patches that are, that are bare. And that's really what... Charles Spurgeon saying there about our lives that that's what we should do with God's word that we should allow it to saturate us and and to start to begin uh, new roots and new life uh, so that we can fill in those barren areas and we also need to read God's word with prayer as I told you in the, in the beginning this evening that we should look to ask God for direction ask God for wisdom Ask God to not be prideful or boastful because uh, he gives us his word to have, but that it would make changes in us. Lord, if there's something in my life that needs to be changed in your word, let me see that so that it can be, it can be done. <clears throat> and so God's word is to saturate our thirsty souls. Help us to experience transformation. A better metaphor might be one that happens in the kitchen. Uh, how meat is often uh, saturated, sometimes for hours, in a marinade so that it will become more tender, so that it will become more flavorful. And so with that image in mind this evening, consider what it would be like to saturate your life in God's word in such a way that it transforms you from the ordinary to the extraordinary. Like that piece of meat that gets completely transformed after it's been saturated in a great marinade. This evening I took a hot cup of water. I mean, how many times do we like to drink a hot cup of water? Never often, right, Sarah? No. But I took that hot cup of water and I poured some cocoa in it. And so it saturated the water and it, it changed the flavor, it changed the consistency. And this hot, ordinary cup of water became an extraordinary cup of hot chocolate, right? Yeah, it, it's great. And so that's what God's word can do to us. It can, it can change and transform us. And so the importance of, of Scripture in the lives of the, of the believers shows us that, that like I said, Jesus quoted uh, Scripture 78 times in, in, the, in the Gospels there. In Luke 4, he, he used Satan's attacks on him, combated them through Scripture. Jesus countered the attacks of the enemy with truth from God's word. We need that truth in our lives today. 
If Jesus needed the truth of God's word to show that in his life, you know that we need it today. It helps our relationship with him, it helps us understand his identity, and ours as well. And so I want you to think this week, how can you, just you, not somebody else, but just you, how can you immerse yourself in God's word this week? And maybe that might be the fact of just reading a couple of scriptures each day. Now, you might not read it all, and so this might be a whole new concept for you. I've always said it's not about reading from Genesis to Revelation. It's about reading the scripture and then applying that scripture to our lives that day. That's what it's about. So how can you immerse yourself in God's word? Do you make a do you need to make a little note on your calendar that pops up at twelve o'clock and says, you know, this is my lunchtime, right? Read scripture. Read God's word. Immerse yourself in God's word. Whatever it takes to to get you to that point of immersing yourself in God's word, that's what you want to be about. If it requires a little calendar uh, pop up on your phone, you know we've done those for different things when we've uh, had special times of prayer. Uh, we would uh, invite everybody to pray at a certain time or or something like that, and so maybe that's what it could be. Uh, uh, maybe you can. Uh, leave your Bible right at your dinner table or something. Uh, maybe you can lay it on your uh, pillow at, at, at bedtime. Whatever it takes to read just a little bit each day. And of course, you know, everybody's asking, you know, what do you read? Well, I'd encourage you to read the Gospel of John. Well, when you get done with that, what do you read? Well, I'd encourage you to read the Gospel of John. And when you get done with that, what would you read? Well, I'd encourage you to read the Gospel of John. Until you really had a full understanding about the Gospel of John, it, it, just read it over and over and over. And again, it's not about reading from the beginning of the Gospel of John to the end to get through it. It's about taking the small bite-sized pieces, just a few verses, and then allowing those to uh, penetrate into your heart and your life and, and allowing it to be worked out in your life. And so that's what immersing ourselves in God's Word is to be about. And so that's kind of where we're going to close up this evening's time with. How can you immerse yourself in God's Word this evening? Now, I really encourage you to uh, take some time studying God's Word this week. Uh, if you want to use that reading plan that's in your uh, Bible, that, or the, uh, the, <laughs> the Discipleship Pathway, the Bible study, if you want to use that to read by, that, that's great. Use those. Uh, if you don't have the book, again, the Gospel of John is a great place to not only start, but to saturate yourself with and just really be filled with it. Uh, maybe try to uh, convict yourself of, of memorizing a scripture this week. You know, uh, pick one to memorize. Anyway, think about those things. Um, and I really encourage you and I can't encourage you enough, either in your book or in your Bible. I know a lot of people don't like to write in your Bibles, but man, mine are, I've got all kinds of notes, dates, uh, when God did this, when God did that, how God did it, uh, what God's saying uh, in my Bible. It's all written in there uh, because I, I said, Sonny, you know, when I, when I leave this earth, I want to leave a Bible with each one of my kids that I've read through that, that they can find Jesus in. If they don't know Jesus, which uh, they all tell me they do, if they don't know Jesus, they're going to find him in it. And so I want them to be able to take my Bible and let somebody else know who Jesus is. And so write that down. Journal some things out, especially now uh, we're beginning a new Disciples Pathway. We're beginning a new portion in your life. We're beginning a new section. So journal some things out. Write it down because I think you'll be amazed how you see things transpiring in your life once you start to immerse yourself in God's Word. So spend some time um, journaling this week. What God spoke to you, what He said, what you understand, what uh, maybe even uh, this is what I need God to do in my life. 
and begin that as a prayer as well. And then I want you to share with others. Um, take some time this week to contact just a few people and encourage them with Scripture. You know, we can, we can, you can send stuff on on Facebook to somebody. You can even look up a scripture, uh, you know, John three sixteen, and and get an image of it now, and you can send it to somebody's Facebook page. Just encourage them with it. Um, maybe you want to write a card, put a scripture in it. Maybe you want to send them a distant message. Maybe you want to text them. Maybe you want to. Uh, whatever works in, you know, maybe you want to call them on the phone for real and read the scripture to them and just say, hey, I just wanted to encourage you with this scripture today. And so I pray this evening that, that you'll commit to um, sharing the scripture with somebody this week. Can you do that? Uh, somehow, some way, whatever way you choose, and if the first one works pretty good, maybe you could do it on a daily basis. How about that? And so spend some time journaling, spend some time immersing yourself in God's Word, and then share some Scripture with somebody this week. Uh, maybe you might want to look up in the Scriptures and say, uh, do not be afraid. Maybe you know somebody that might be fearful this week, and so maybe that would be a good thing to send them. Anyway, hey, we love spending time with you. I'm so glad you joined us at the table this evening. Um, you got to all see some of our uh, flowers from uh, the Ottawa, Kansas area. But uh, uh, really it's about just immersing ourselves in, in God, His Word, and our relationship with one another. Uh, again, we're so excited to, to join with you from the table. Uh, I always share with you, you know, if you ever feel the desire to... Uh, to, to share and to be a part of our ministry you can uh, uh, there's a app on the Facebook page you can download onto your phone or computer or tablet and you can give directly to the to ministry that helps uh, we even had uh, some of our missionaries uh, this past Sunday the Martinez family there and that's uh, they're out sharing God's word and so if you haven't seen that I encourage you to go back and uh, watch Sunday's uh, Facebook uh, video but um, that's a part of God's word there as well and so our support that we get helps support them in doing what they're doing. And so there's several other ministries that we're a part of that you can do that. Uh, you can uh, make a check out. You can mail it to uh, North Baptist Church, uh, Post Office Box 117, Ottawa, Kansas, 66067. Write our attention lend on it. That'll get right to where that'll go as well. Or you can even join us on a Sunday morning and drop it right in the offering plate. Uh, Anyway, all those things help support some of those ministries that we're a part of, like the food pantry that we have tomorrow as well. And so, um, that's that this evening. Um, next week, uh, really super uh, excited about that one too. It's connected through prayer. And so, uh, the message just coming Sunday is going to be prayer. That's what we're to be about. Okay. And so I encourage you to, to join us uh, Sunday morning at 1030. Not only join us, but uh, join us with somebody else. Invite somebody to come along beside you. Uh, we'll be in Luke chapter 11 this Sunday morning. Uh, verse 8 is where we're going to be. And with that this evening, thank you for joining us. Share this on your page. Share it with others. Share some scripture with somebody this week. Maybe you can even... Report back next week during uh, Bible study time and tell us how it went and uh, begin the journal. Anyway, we thank you. We love you. Uh, great to see you this evening. I'm glad you joined us. Um, look forward to seeing you Sunday. Look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. And like I always say, if you guys need anything, uh, if you need some help with understanding something, you need some help doing this or that or whatever it is, let us know. Uh, if we can't get to it, we'll get somebody that can. Uh, we want to be about helping one another. And that doesn't mean that you have to live in Ottawa for that to take place either. Uh, you guys that uh, join us from outside the area, we are more than glad to help in any way we can. Uh, God has connected us for a reason. And so with that this evening, hey, love you guys. Have a super 21st of April. Uh, thank Jesus for it. And we'll see you Sunday morning, 1030. Good night.